Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome back to another Supergirl episode review. My thoughts on tonight's episode of Supergirl titled The Darkest Place. And this was a really stacked episode. Honestly, a little too stacked in my opinion. I thought, honestly, I thought there was way too much going on in this episode. I liked a lot of the storylines that were going on, but honestly, it was just too many cogs moving at the same time to me. And it was just too much going on in an episode. To, it just felt like the story was just all over the place because you had like like five different storylines going on. You had, you know, Kara and Monel being captured at Cadmus. You had, you know, Wynn and James dealing with the whole Guardian situation. You had Alex and Maggie. You had, you know, Jean and McGann dealing with their beef. Okay, well, that was four. But still, that's like too much going on at once that overall didn't tie in together like cohesively as one single story. And um, I, I didn't hate the episode or anything. It just took me out of it because there's so much going on. It's like... You could have calmed down for a second. So, um, to get into things I actually did enjoy about this episode, I definitely liked in the beginning of the episode when when they're talking about vigilantes and Car brought up the fact you know Superman had worked with the vigilante with gadgets and problems in the past. Obviously, that being a Batman Easter egg, and I honestly thought I, this show has made a couple of different Batman Easter eggs in the past. So I think that is a clear indication of okay, obviously Batman exists in these in this universe as well as Gotham. So are we going to see him? Probably not. I also don't want to. See, I don't want to see a CW Batman, especially since I, I come to a point where actually I hate Tyler Hecklin Superman. Like I've rewatched those episodes, and the more I watch it, the more angry I get. Um, I don't want to see a Batman. It's cool to have those Easter eggs. Just kind of leave them as Easter eggs, and I just don't see the need for the show to bring them on, especially when you have a great Batman and Ben Affleck in the movies. Um, a cool Easter like Easter like nonetheless. Um, I did. I'm glad we're kind of going back to Cat Kill a little bit. You know, with the scenes of James having like a brief scene with Snapper Carr when they're talking about vigilantes and how he's, you know, James is too attached to superheroes because he grew up, you know, being best friends with Superman essentially. And now he's, you know, like you know, friends with Supergirl and now he's defending Guardian. So I understand where Step Snapper Carr was in that situation. But the whole Guardian storyline in this episode wasn't all that captivating to me. I think it's cool seeing James as Guardian. The, the Guardian storyline, I'll admit, was really, really rushed. They should have saved him becoming Guardian for at least a few more episodes. Because, honestly, that was one of the problems I had in this episode was just... There's just way too much going on. And the Guardian storyline was, honestly, kind of unnecessary in this episode. You could have had it in any other episode and have that be more of the focus. But I feel like any time we saw the Guardian stuff going on, it was just just it was just too much of like this, a, like a side storyline going on in the episode that kind of took me out of it. And the whole thing with like a, another vigilante kind of trying to frame him. And I feel like that whole storyline was just a recycled plot of any generic air episode of the week on Arrow. I, I just got that kind of a vibe from what was going on in the episode. So like everything. And then like him and James just were, were way too obvious. But like, like, oh, you know, I bet he has a partner. I, I got that Guardian's cool. And it's like they're, they're being so in your face. Like, oh, we're not, you know, we're, we don't work with Guardian. We don't know who he is. Oh, he must be a cool guy. Just stop it. Stop it. That's not how normal people talk. It was just that part of the writing in this episode I thought was honestly it was, it was bad writing. Um, but sorry if I'm like sounding like a Debbie Donner. Uh, I'm, I'll try to get back to um, being more positive. Um, anyways, um, finally seeing the real Hank Henshaw again, a character who we haven't actually seen, you know, the, the real Hank Henshaw since season one. And we at first we knew we all thought he had died, and now he actually is the cyborg Superman. A character who, when, he was, when they first announced Hank Henshaw being in the show, that's who we all thought he was going to be. And him being, you know, an African-American character compared to just a white, a white guy who looks like Superman or whatever. It was still interesting. And I like seeing the, the evil version of Hank Henshaw, like the actual version of Hank Henshaw. Because it's just... And the thing is, it's cool for David uh, Harewood to do that. The, guy, the actor who plays, you know, physicalness of Hank, Hank Henshaw and John Jones. I think it's kind of like how I feel about with the actor who portrays Harrison Wells on The Flash. It gives him a chance to be the same character-ish without being the same character at all. So he can be John Jones and mean this like loving, caring guy and also be like the leader of the DEO and then also be the super evil guy who used to be the leader of the DEO and now he's bitter and now he's evil and all this stuff. So it's definitely cool to see that going on, especially in a character, in an actor who has really grown on me since the beginning of this, of this show because I didn't love... Hank, Hank Henshaw in the first couple of episodes of the show, but he's on John Jones has become one of my favorite characters and seeing 
you know, the actor portray Cyborg Superman in this episode. I mean, giving him the name of Cyborg Superman was a little cheesy because, and other than the the super strength and stuff, he, there's no actual resemblance to Superman. So they really didn't need to do that. It could have been a cool thing for, for us fans. Like, don't call him that, but we all know he is. Um, but the, besides that, I, th I still think it was cool nonetheless. Um, and then one of the big reveals in this episode was finding out that, you know, we already kind of knew who... We found out that the, the doctor who runs Cadmus is, you know, Lena Luther's mom or adopted mom. And we found out her name is Liliana Luther. And she actually is like, you know, Lex's mom and, you know, Lena's adopted mom. And she kind of talks about, she, she's obviously definitely a Luther in the way she twists the perspective of, you know, Superman and Supergirl and saying how, like, they're the ones, like, like all Lex was trying to do was be a hero. And then, like, Superman took that away from him. And it made Lex out to be the bad guy. I mean, obviously very like a one-sided view, but bringing in that, that like Lex Luthor typical point of view in a character who's obviously a Luthor, but bringing that into the show. And that's what I was expecting to see more or less with the Leno Luthor character when they first introduced her. And honestly, I'm kind of hoping she's not a bad guy to kind of break the stereotype of being a Luthor. And not even that, just having a cool female character who doesn't have to be a villain just because that's, she's a villain in the comics. And that, that reveal... Again, I mean, it was a huge reveal, but for just finding out her name and more of who she is and kind of why she's, you know, doing this thing with Cadmus. And I'm not going to lie, Cadmus is not what I want it to be because in the comics, Cadmus Labs is just a, a, or it's just a laboratory. It, that's really all it is. It's a place for, it was a place where the, that was the birth of Superboy. And they even did that in Smallville, you know, and Justice. And there's some evil things going and sketchy things going on there. But it's like, oh no, we are Cadmus, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Like, no, no, that's not really what Cadmus should be doing. <laughs> At least in my personal opinion. It's just, I don't like the Cadmus as like an evil organization. It's like, no, you don't have to do that. They could be doing shady things. I just don't want them to be like the main like antagonist of this season. I just, I, don't, I just don't, it's not believable to me, especially because that's not what I want from Cadmus. Especially if they're potentially setting up bringing in Connor Kent with, especially in this episode when they, when they drew Kara's blood, does that mean we're gonna get some variation of Connor Kent that ends up being a female? Who knows at this point? I don't know. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they do with that because uh, they wouldn't have done the whole blood transfusion thing if they weren't gonna follow through with that down the line. Um, so all the kind of stuff, you know, but again, Monel in this episode did nothing for me. Um, I don't like that character at all. And then obviously, they're obviously setting up him and Car being a thing. And just stop it! Stop it! You're forcing this thing. Okay, people say that, you know, Kara and James was forced, you know, the, the, was it well written all, all the time? No. But I just, I hate how they ha have handled Kara and Monel so far. Monel is a completely unlikable character. He's not the Monel I want from the comics at all. He's just a, he's an asshole. And there's nothing about him to like. And I don't want him to be with Kara because Kara, first of all, deserves better. And she has more chemistry with almost every other character, more so than him. She has more chemistry with fucking Lena Luthor, and Lena, I'd rather see her with Lena Luthor than with stupid fucking mon -El. And I'm just, I just, I apologize for that little bit of a rant. I just, I don't like the mon -El character at all. Um, what else did I like? Um, another Easter egg I wanted to mention was, um, when they're talking about, you know, the, um, when they're in Cadmus and Kara and, and mon -El were talking about, you know, how to chop there. And so the, the bars are made of nth metal, which is from Thanagar, and they didn't mention that in this episode. And if you guys don't know what Thanagar is, that's essentially like the Hawk world, or you know, that that's where like pretty much where Hawkman and Hawk Girl come from, or at least the, the race of Hawk people that were that's where they come from in DC Comics. And already and we've already seen an iteration of Hawkman and Hawk Girl in DC TV with Hawkman and Hawk Girl on Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow and the Flash last year, and they were done pretty poorly in my opinion. But it was cool again, another cool Easter egg for the fans, nonetheless. Um, what else? And I did like how in this episode they kind of did bring up the whole situation with Maggie and Alex, and Alex kind of confronting Maggie about those things. I mean, I can get obviously I get where Alex is coming from, but at the same time, it's like Maggie never said, "Hey, I want to be with you." So I mean, I understand I'll, it took a lot for Alex to come out and kind of realize she's gay, first of all. But I feel, I feel like this with anyone, whether you're a guy or a girl, or whatever. Like you shouldn't. Be, just because someone turns you down and just wants to be your friend does not mean and they're, and they're being nice to you and you guys have this chemistry does not mean they owe you being with them they don't owe you anything so in that aspect like I didn't like I understood where Alex is coming from but at the same time it's like okay she didn't say hey I want to be with you at least in that moment so I, again I understood why she was upset but it's like at the same time it's like okay she didn't 
explicitly say, I want to date you. So it's just a little bit of a back and forth for that. But I, I, do, I do like their chemistry on the last on the show, and I'm excited to see what they do with their relationship moving forward. Um, what else? Um, sorry, I'm just going through um, all the notes I took down while I was watching the episode. Um, and then, you know, Jean finding out in this episode that, you know, Megan is a white Martian, and then his, you know, brief battle with her. That was a story, that was a storyline I, again, I kind of wish they saved for another episode because this episode was already stacked as it was. We could have spent a little more time on it. And the actress who's played Megan, or played, who's currently playing her, she's doing a great job in giving us a character who feels, honestly feels like she did the wrong thing. And she's starting, trying to make up for it and be a different person than just being the typical white Martian that john sees her as at the moment and i know he's got to turn around and she's gonna end, they're gonna end up teaming up and it's gonna be like you know martian manhunter and miss martian like like you've seen like in young justice and stuff like that so while i i, I get john's pain like he is being racist <laughs> i mean about it i mean i get I, I get where he's coming from i get it but at the same time he is being judgmental and being these things i get and he has a, a a reason to be but it's just yeah um what else? Um, finding y'all, and then seeing um, Dean Kane back as Jeremiah Danvers and him helping Kara and Monel escape. It was cool seeing him back because um, we haven't seen him in a really long time, and they kind of like forgot that storyline of, of them trying to find um, Jeremiah uh, with Cadmus and all that stuff earlier. Well, because that was the thing they were setting up at the end of last season, and then they kind of completely ignore it this season. But it was cool to see Dean Kane back nonetheless, um, especially with the move to, to the CW and everything. And I wasn't sure if they were even going to bring some of those characters back. I'm glad I've seen Dean Kane back. Um, obviously, you know, since he played Superman in the past and he's guest starred on Smallville and stuff like that, it's just cool seeing the character back and the actor back. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Again, I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed the individual storylines going on. Um, a couple of them, I think, just could have been saved for other episodes. Like the Maggie and Alex thing and the guard and, you know, like that. And then dealing with, you know, Monel and Kara and Cadmus. Like that should have been the focus of the episode. Not so much, you know, that with, with Guardian and then with Miss Martian and then finding out she's a white Martian and all that stuff. It was just too much for me in one single episode. It should have been at least a couple of different episodes spread out. So, because this, this, it was just it was too much story within one episode for me. That was just my biggest problem with it. But it wasn't a bad episode. It was just, I didn't like how the story was laid out. So yeah, those are my thoughts on tonight's episode. What did you guys like about it? Send your thoughts in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for every video I put up on my channel. Between my reviews of Star Wars Rebels, Supergirl, The Flash, Legend of Tomorrow, and next week is the four-way crossover between all the DC TV shows. So obviously it's the crossover between Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and Legend of Tomorrow. And yes, I will be doing a review of the Arrow episode for that week. And on, I might even go back to watching and reviewing Arrow again. I mean, I've already been watching the show. I'm caught up now. But um, who knows? I mean, we'll see where we are next week. So I'm, you guys can check out that review next week, as well as the other videos I have up on my channel. Again, once you guys hit that subscribe button. And thank you guys for watching. And until next time, have a good one.